Hello there and welcome to the series of videos going through the content of A-level maths. Here we're finding the critical values on a hypothesis test so we can answer questions from exercise 7b. Now let's, uh, let's have a look at the question here and I'll explain what a critical value is. So if we consider flipping a coin and recording the number of heads, um, we flip the coin 15 times, we'd expect some variation in the number of heads that appears. Maybe it's, uh, it could most likely be seven heads or eight heads to appear, could be down as low as five heads to appear, could be as, uh, could be as low as four heads. Is three heads, is that, that's quite unlikely, isn't it? So what we're looking for here there is the point at which we would start to be suspicious as to whether the coin is biased or not biased towards heads or tails. So what we've got here and what we're going to look at, just to visualise the problem for a second, is the binomial distribution of um, flipping a coin that on a fair dice, so it's a 50-50 toss. Okay, and the probability of coming out with three heads is about 0.02. The probability of coming out with about seven heads is 0.19-ish. So this is a table or a graph, effectively, of all the probabilities on all the each individual number of successes of flipping a head. And the way that we find a critical value, or we find a critical region, is from the point at which the sum total of probabilities less than a certain point is less than 5%. Um, so, so 3 here, it looks like the probabilities underneath this uh, point of 3 here is less than 5%. And what we're going to be using here is the probability CD, the cumulative distribution function um, of our binomial probability, because we're working with the probability up to and including 3. It's effectively saying that three is the worst three or fewer um, three or fewer uh, flips to get a head on a fifteen flip of a coin um, would be suspicious, and we would suspect that from three downwards, if we scored a less than three heads or fewer, then our coin would be um, our, would be biased. And what we can do here is, on our calculator, using the binomial CD value, we can use the list function, um, and with the probability of 0.5, and we'll type in some values of 1, 2, 3, and 4, and get their binomial cumulative distribution uh, probability. So it looks like here we get the key values of the probability of x being less than or equal to 3, is 0 0.0175, and the probability of x being less than or equal to 4 being 0 0.0592. Now you can clearly see here that this probability from 4 downwards gives us a value of more than 5%. So our critical value here is going to be 3, because the probability from 3 downwards is less than 5%. You're always going to be working with a probability of a certain number of successes or fewer, or alternatively at the other end, you could be working with a certain number of successes or more. Okay, so 3 here is the critical value because this is the point at which that probability or fewer gives us uh, less than 5%. So the critical region is x is less than or equal to 3, and the actual significance level of this test here is 1.75 here. So we tested it to the 5% significance level, but our actual test of significance was 1.75. But as I said, we don't just test the lower end. We could be te potentially testing the upper end of this scale as well. So we could be testing the sum of all the probabilities over a certain value is less than 5%. So I would be suspicious if out of 15 times that I flipped a coin, I got 12 or more heads. And is 12 the critical value or is 11 going to be the critical value? And the only way to find that out is to use your calculator in the binomial CD mode, cumulative distribution mode. Um, but because we're working up the top end, we're looking for this probability or fewer to be 95% and then we'll take the rest of those values upwards. <clears throat> so the key values that we're going to read from this graph here, from this calculated graph here, is the probability of less than or equal to 10 being uh, just over 5% or just, just, uh, just over 
94% um, here. And the probability of x is less than or equal to 11 is 0 0.98, uh, so 98% here. So um, what we're then going to do, because we're working up the upper end and we want the probability of a certain number of successes or more, we then have to flip it round. So from this probability here, I can do 1 minus it to give me the probability of 11 successes or more, being 0 0.0593. That's more than 5%, so it's not going to be 11. Uh, but the probability of more than or equal to 12 is less than 5%. It's 1.76%. So 12 here is going to be the critical value. And the critical region is going to be x is greater than or equal to 12. And the actual level of significance of this test is 1.76. OK, so this is how we find the critical values. We're going to use our calculator in the binomial CD mode to be looking for when the probability up to a certain point is less than 5% or the probability of a certain value or more is less than 5% as well. And generally we're going to use this 5% significance level, could be 1%, could be 10%, but it's generally 5%. Okay, let's have a look at a question here then. So a single observation is taken from a binomial distribution with six trials and a probability of P. The observation is then used to test the, alt, the, the null hypothesis where the probability is 0.35 and against the alternative hypothesis, which is that the probability is more than 0.35. And the question here is, using a 5% significance level, find the critical region for this test. And then part B is state the actual significance level of this test. Now, when you're doing these questions, I wouldn't suggest that you um, plot out a binomial curve here, but it's just helping me visualise the problem here. <clears throat> what we're looking for is the probability, uh, the alternative hypothesis, where the probability is more than 0.35. So we're looking here on the more than side of the graph to find the point at which we would start to be suspicious as to whether the probability is more than 0.35. So is 5 going to be the value, or is 4 going to be the value, or maybe 6 going to be the value? And the only way to find out the critical value here is to do some work on our calculator. So go to the binomial CD mode, um, go to list, type in a bunch of numbers that, that are approximately going to have a probability less than or equal to it of about 95%. Uh, type in your variables of 6 as your trials and 0.35 as your probability. And here, we're going to get the key values here of the probability being less than or equal to 3 is 0.8825. And the probability of uh, less than or equal to 4 is 0.9776. Now, what does this mean? Well, it means that the probability of it being more than or equal to 4 is 10% likely. So out of these six trials, there's an 11, 12% chance that we get um, an outcome that is 4 or more, which is not going to be at the 5% significance level. The probability of scoring uh, 5 or more uh, out of these six trials is 0 .0, 0 0.0224, which is about 2%. So this here is going to be my critical point. So 5 here uh, is the critical value, and x is greater than 5 is the critical region. So this is the region that has a probability of less than 5%. So if we then conduct uh, these six trials and we score either 5 or 6, then I would be suspicious that the probability is not equal to 0 0.35, and that the probability is higher than 0.35. For part B, the actual significance level of this test is the probability that we have here, which is 2.24. Now, so the key part here is to understand that when you have a probability that's greater than, or the alternative hypothesis is a probability that's greater than 0.35, you're looking at the top end of the graph. If the probability here were to be less than 0.35, I'd be looking at the lower end of the graph. OK, so in this one here, we're going to be looking at doing a two-tailed critical region. Uh, and I can identify this because my alternative hypothesis here 
is P is not equal to 0.25. So let's just read through the question. We've got binomial distribution, 40 trials, probability P, a uh, single observation test is used um, to see if the probability of the null hypothesis is 0 0.25 against the alternative hypothesis of P equals 0 point, is not equal to 0 0.25. And the questions here are uh, using the 2% significance level, find the critical region of this test. Uh, the probability in each tail should be as close to 0 0.1 as possible. Now, because we've got a probability that's not equal to 0 0.25 as our alternative hypothesis, we're going to have to split up this 2% into two 1%. And in each tail, we're going to be looking to find the closest um, cumulative probability that will be as close to 0 0.01 um, as possible. So uh, what we need to first do is to pull out our binomial CD mode on our calculator and type in the list function and then um, the n value is going to be 40, the p is going to be 0 0.25 and we'll just put a few suggested values um, for x that's going to give us a cumulative probability as close to 0 0.01 as possible. The two that are closest here are this 3 and 4 value. So the probability where we have three or fewer successes is about 0.46%. Um, and the probability of having four or fewer successes is about 1.6%. Now the closest one here in this case here is the critical region being x is less than or equal to three. So therefore that means that if we were to get three successes um, out of these 40 trials with a probability of 0.25, we would be suspicious that our probability might be potentially lower than 0 0.25. Anything above that within reason until we get to this tail is going to be fine and we can assume that our probability is 0 0.25. On the flip side of things, looking at the upper end of our uh, scale here, type in a few more values going down uh, on the list function here to get as close to 99% as possible for the upper end, so that when we flip it over and look at a certain value or more, we get 1%. So for the probability, the cumulative probability up to 16 or successes is about 98%, very close to 99%, um, or the probability uh, less than or equal to 17 successes is 99.5%. Now flipping that round, we get this here. So this one here flips around to this one here. If you've got less than 16 successes, the alternative to that is more than 17 successes, which is about 1.16%. And the less than 17 successes flips around to more than or equal to 18 successes, which is about 4, 0.47%. And in this case here, x being greater than or equal to 17 is the critical region as this is closer to, um, closer to 1%. So the combined critical region here is going to be x is less than or equal to 3, giving you 0.47%, and x being greater than or equal to 17, giving you 1.16%. That's effectively to say then, if you were to conduct your 40 trials and you got a value in between 4 and 16, you would be happy with your probability equaling 0.25. However, if your um, probability came out, if your number of successes came out to be less than 3 or equal to 3, you'd be suspicious. And if it came out to be more than or equal to 17, you'd also be a bit suspicious as well. Okay, state the actual level of significance of this test. Well, add your two probabilities together and you get 1.63%. So we were asked for close to 2% significance level. In this case here, we've got a 1.63% significance level. All right, and so your turn to have a go at some questions here then. Pause the video, grab your calculator and have a go at these two. All right, then well done for having a go at these two then. So a test statistic has a distribution B10 uh, with a probability of P. Null hypothesis 0.2, alternative hypothesis greater than 0.2. Find the significance level for this test using the 5% significance level. So what I'd have here is um, 
I'd have to get out my calculator and into my calculator I would substitute in n equals 10, p equals 0 0.2 and I would then give myself a list of all of the numbers, I'd probably type in about 7, 8, 9, 10 that would get me as close to a cumulative probability of 95 as possible which is exactly what I've got here. So I want as close to or under 95% as I possibly can. Now here, uh, the probability of x being less than or equal to uh, 4 looks like the good one to me. So 0 0.9672. Therefore, when we flip that round and make it greater than or equal to 5, we're going to get 0 0.032. Eight. So 3.28% there. So therefore the critical region here is going to be x is greater than or equal to 5. Okay, now the reason I worked with the upper end of the scale here is because my alternative hypothesis was greater than, or greater than 0 0.2. So therefore I'm assuming that, um, that the outcome of my trials is going to be higher um, than I would expect it to be if I um, had a probability of 10 and a uh, number of trials of 10 and a probability of 0 0.2. Remember that you have to use the CD mode on your calculator, the cumulative distribution probability, rather than the PD mode. And I'd say that's a good rule for the whole of hypothesis testing as well. It's always binomial CD mode, not PD. Okay, moving on to question four now. A random variable has a distribution P of 20. So into my calculator goes N equals 20. Probability of 0 0.4. And this time I've got a two-tailed um, critical region to find because my uh, probability is not equal to 0 0.4. So my 5% significance level here is going to be split up into two different 25 significances. So what I'm going to do to start with then is looking for the point at which we get something close to 2.5%. Now I think here the 3 value here is going to be pretty good for that. Uh, x being less than or equal to 3 gives me something less than 2.5%. And on the upper end of the scale, something that's less than 2.5%, I think this one here looks pretty good, so probability of less than or equal to 12 is 0 0.9789, but then flipping that round, x being greater than or equal to 13 um, would be the other way around of this, or the 1 minus of this, so it's 0 0.0211. Okay. So there we are then. So here, uh, the critical region of this test here is going to be x is less than or equal to 3, or x is greater than or equal to 13. <clears throat> so therefore, if uh, when we do our 20 trials, if we get a value outside of the region from 4 to 12, um, I would be suspicious that the probability was not equal to 0 0.4 in this um, experiment. Write down the actual level of significance of this test. We'll just add your probabilities together. So 1.59% add 2.11% gives me 3.70%. So there we are then. That's the answer to question four then. So have a go at every question from 7B. There's no point in... Uh, trying to skip through and just doing the ones that you know you can probably do. It's really important that you get this um, get this topic spot on because it is a difficult topic. Uh, do feel free to persevere through the difficult questions and ask your teacher for help if you need any. Thanks very much for watching.